Hello and welcome to another Tech Tip video. I'm Lisa Louise Cook and I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I'm having a blast putting these videos together and I hope that you're enjoying them as well. In fact, I know you are because I've been getting so many emails. And uh, in fact, one of your emails is going to be the um, premise for today's video. So let's head to email. I got an email from Doris and she says, I just enjoyed your video about Google Images. It seems that it won't work on my iPhone 6S Plus. I have to wait until I'm on my laptop later. What a great tip. Thanks for all you do to help us make our computer life easier and more fun. Well, Doris, thank you for writing and I am really happy that you feel like it's easier and more fun because that's the whole idea. You know, technology is really kind of creating a lot of overload for a lot of us, me included. And so knowing how things work and how to make the most use of the technology that we do use certainly makes sense. Um, but I have some good news for Doris and so many of you who do have mobile devices. And that is that the Google Chrome image search that I showed you in the, in the previous video, it can be done on your mobile device. And in fact, it can be done on all different kinds of web browsers. We were just kind of focusing in on Google Chrome, but let me show you how it can also work in Google Chrome on your mobile device, okay? So let's say that you have a photograph on your, um, your phone. Here's my phone. And um, let me fire this up for you so you can kind of take a look along with me and see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here it is. And um, what you see here, let me close this up. Okay, so let's say that you have a photograph on your camera roll and we're gonna tap photos and you can see on your camera roll that you might have lots of different photos that you might want to search. Um, so here, here's a picture of me. We can search this image. What we're gonna do is tap share and we're going to save it to Dropbox. So here I'm gonna save it to Dropbox and I can pick a different folder if I want to. I'm gonna put it into, um, oh, we'll just toss it in genealogy and tap choose. Okay, so it's in the genealogy folder and I'm gonna tap save. Great. Now, Dropbox, as you may know, and I know a lot of people at least have a free Dropbox account, uh, it's a place where you can store your files online on the cloud so that those files are available to all of your different devices, whether it's your home computer or your phone or you got one of these, right? Your iPad or your tablet. It's great. You can have all of your files across your different devices. So let's open the Dropbox app. So this is a free app. And um, if I just kind of do my little swipe down, it will show the most recent images that I've worked with here. So here's my picture. And what we're gonna do is tap share. And the beauty of Dropbox is that it assigns its a URL specific to each image, okay? It's like each image that you put in Dropbox can potentially have its own web page, And that's what the URL address is, right? So we're gonna tap the first option, which is to copy that link, the address to your image. It's copied. Now we need to head back to Google Chrome. I know it seems a little convoluted, but when you need to do this, you'll be, you'll be glad you know how, okay? So let's tap Google Chrome. Okay, great. Now, what we're gonna do is we copied that link um, basically onto the clipboard of your mobile device. So we are going to pull it up, okay? I'm gonna press and hold, and that will paste in that little menu and click go. What this is gonna do is bring up my image. Oh, there I am, okay. So if that is an image of me pulled up on a web page that Dropbox assigned to it, we're gonna tap the image. Press and hold our finger actually, not even just tap it. Okay, look what you got. 
you can one you can see this whole convoluted url address that was assigned to dropbox from by, by dropbox to your image that's the link that you could send to somebody else if you wanted to send that image to them but as you can see it's very long and complicated so it's very unlikely that anybody else would be able to type it in exactly and find your your image we are going to tap say uh, search google for this image that's image search built right in. So we're going to tap that and it's going to go onto the web and look at all the other websites around the world and see if it can find this image. Let's see what we found. Well, it says no other sizes of this image was found, but as you can see, look in the search box, you can see the little picture with the X so we can change. We can tap that and turn it off and try a different picture. But it's saying, hey, nobody else has posted that exact picture online. Well, we noticed she's blonde. Maybe it's one of these blonde people. No, it's not one of these blonde people. But that's good. So in a sense, it means that nobody else has copied that image and put it on their website. Surprise. <laughs> no, makes sense. Let's take another look at another Dropbox image, though, that you might be interested in searching yourself. So if I go to Dropbox, here is a map that I found while I was working on my iPad. I saved it um, from online into Dropbox, and now it's available to me on my phone. This is a map of Minnesota. It's from about 1893. So remember how we're going to do this. We're going to grab and copy the address that Dropbox can assign to this by tapping share, tapping copy the link. There it's done. Where we need to head? Google Chrome back to the Google Chrome app and we are going to tap into the box because see it still has the picture there we're just going to get rid of that okay and we're going to tap in here press and hold so I can paste there's my address it was on my clipboard I didn't even see it on my mobile device I'll click go there's the image so now that you're looking at the image on the Dropbox website, we're going to be able to tap, tap and hold a little bit and search Google for this image. Watch the magic. When it ran the search, it found this image on several different websites. And do you see it recognizes that it is Minnesota? So those are the, the bulk of the main images. And then it kind of moves into, well, this looks like a sepia tone um, map. And so there's other ones on the web that you might want to find. But in this case, th this exact image does exist on other websites. So you can look it up. So if you think about it, it's very possible that you might download an image. Have you ever done that? And then a couple months or even a couple of years later gone, oh gosh, where did I get that? I cannot remember where I got that, that picture, that image. Try an image search. That would be a way to very quickly spot that image on other websites. And now you and Doris can do this on your phone. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. And of course, you can learn about all kinds of Google search tips in my book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox. That's the second edition currently. And um, until next time, hey, have fun searching and have fun climbing your family tree. Google it. Mm -hmm. oh, bye.